Welcome to our overview of Acumatica receivables. Our dashboard gives us a snapshot of the condition of our receivables, our KPIs to let us know there are some items that need to be taken care of, and allows us to navigate quickly to important tasks. From the receivables menu, the preferences is where you can configure your receivables with items like terms, payment methods, and trading currencies. You can set up your overdue charge rules, percentages, and take a look at the customer classes. Customer classes, you can design however you define your client base. In this case, we have Canadian customers where we can set up the currency that we trade in, default terms and payment methods. Let's go ahead and take a look at our customers. This is our client list. From here, I can take a look at a specific customer such as Alta Ace, and here's where we'll see many of those preferences start to show up. I can take a look at the financial terms. You can set your terms, whatever method you use. You can go in and set up the statement cycles, how you handle write-offs. The billing allows you to determine if you're going to be printing invoices, emailing invoices for this client, whether they're an open item or balance forward customer. We can have multiple locations for this customer, have multiple payment methods, such as credit card, cash, wire. We can add multiple contacts and salespeople from our staff, and we can take a look at the activities. Activities allow us to create tasks for follow-up. In this case, we have a task for somebody to make a call about scheduling a payment plan. We can create other activities such as notes, chats, messages. All of these are tracked here, including any emails that we may send to them. We can also track notes about the items, everything about your customer in one place. While you're on the customer list, if you wanted to, you can add side panels to go ahead and look up their sales orders, look up their contact information, so that you can quickly get to that without having to drill into each of these. As you move through them, your side panel adjusts to go with the client that you're looking at. Let's go ahead and receive a payment. When I want to receive a payment, let's say from USA Bartending School, I get the amount here. They send me a check for $4,230. At this point, I could just go ahead and release that, accept the payment directly into my checking account or to an undeposited funds clearing account waiting for a deposit to be taken to the bank. We also can go down and take a look at the invoices that it would auto apply to. If I wanted to, I'll click on auto apply. It takes the oldest invoice first. In this case, I noticed that that's not exactly right. I'm going to go down here and say they paid 230 on that amount and only $4,000 on this invoice. You'll see we have additional invoices, monthly monitoring. Maybe they've paid those. We can make all those changes here. When we're done, we release the payment and go on with the next step. I will mention that if you don't auto apply and you just post the payment, you can always have that scheduled to be done at a later date, maybe before month end, before you begin running your statements. Let's go ahead and go into an invoice, see how we enter our invoices. This is assuming you're not using the sales order process. We're just directly entering invoices into accounts receivable. First thing you do is bring up your client information. Come down here. We're going to go ahead and add an order. I'm going to add software maintenance. You'll notice I have a list coming from my non-inventory or my non-stock inventory items. And so if they purchased one at $2,500 of software maintenance, we can add that. I could also add labor, labor case by the hour. We'll put in two hours for labor. And in this case, we're going to add maintenance, 12 month maintenance plan, $12,000 for one year. If you don't have the items in your non stock inventory, you could easily add items without a case here and just bill them for it by putting in a description here. I'll just say other. We're going to bill them for $100. I'm going to save this invoice. First of all, notice that Alphabet is on credit hold, so we're not going to be able to process it without approval. Also notice that my annual maintenance was put in with a deferral code of 12 months. 
so that we're going to recognize the revenue over a period of time rather than a month of invoice. Additionally, we have some items that were set up to be commissionable, some are not. All of that's taken care of by the fact that we've entered those items in our non-stock. We've created codes for them, told it where to post to, given the rules for it, the pricing for it. All that allows me to quickly enter these things and have them posting to the right places. When I look at my annual maintenance, I can take a look at the deferrals. It brings up this, I'll generate the transactions, and you'll see that we're going to post the first $1,000 in the month of September and the remaining amount for the next 11 months. Alphabet Land is on credit hold. We're going to go ahead and enter another invoice for them. Just as an example, I want to create an invoice here for, we'll just do another charge for a hundred dollars and I'll save that. At this point we could also make this a recurring bill by adding it to the schedule. Unlike the deferral where we're billing twelve thousand dollars at the beginning, here we're going to be billing one hundred dollars but add it to a schedule to be billed each month. To show that I'm just going to come out here and open up a couple of the recurring transactions that we already have. I could have added it to a schedule if it has the same rules. In this case, I have a rule for $1,000. That was the USA bartending we saw. It's going to execute beginning on May 1st 12 times. It's going to be done monthly on the first day of the month. Last executed was September 1st. It's waiting for the next execution to be on October 1st. If it was time, I could run it now, or we can run Generate Recurring Transactions from a menu. Notice there's none available here until I change it to October 1st, and there we see those two recurring transactions. We could click Run one of them or select all of them for one time. Mentioning the recurring transactions, you'll notice that's one of our processes. Because it's a process, I can go ahead and schedule that so I don't have to remember to come in here and run it every single month. I just add it to a schedule, go to my schedule, give it a beginning date. I can tell it if I want it to execute any number of times, if there's no execution limit, keeping my history. Once I schedule this, I give it the day, let's say month end or on the first of the month at a certain time. When I add it to the schedule, I no longer have to come in and remember to run it each month. I know it will be done automatically until the end of the execution period. After it runs, you can go in and take a look and you can see the number of times it's run. The last time it's run, it hasn't been released yet. It's always traceable. You can drill down to each of the invoice numbers. Complete audit trail of everything that's going on with recurring transactions. Let's take a quick look at the common tasks, things you might do month end, such as adding overdue charges, preparing and emailing printing statements. Just like recurring transactions, your monthly activities can be set to run on a schedule. First, you want to make sure you've released all your AR documents. Then you want to go in and print your invoices. When you want to print your invoices, you can do it by assigned to a specific date, uh, those that are ready to be emailed, those that are ready to be printed. When I select the ones that need to be printed, it brings up that list for me, and I can process them one at a time or all. And again, setting it up on a schedule means that it could be done maybe every night, once a week, however often you want to print the invoices that you have to rather than email them. You might want to auto-apply payments before you calculate the overdue charges and statements. When you calculate your overdue charges, you can go in and set up which cycle of accounts you want to do, what the overdue charge date is, and calculate. Calculates all of the amounts out there that are, according to your rules, due for a late charge, and puts the amount in. And you can process those. After that, you're ready to prepare your statements. Again, give it a date that you want to prepare your statements for. Let's say August 31st. And I don't have any due. I print my statements, 
prepare my Dunning letters. All of this can be done. And again, each process set up. So logically it's run. If you want to print things overnight, come in in the morning, get them out in the mail. You can see the process is going to save you a lot of time and make sure everything's done in an orderly fashion. When it's time to make your collection calls, I'm going to go back to my menu and pull up one of my inquiries. Here I have a list of everything that's overdue, what's current. Again, I can take a look at each one of these. If I want to set up a side panel, I can open that up without having to drill into each account. I can take a look at what's past due, what's due. I can take a look at any prior invoices and payment history. If I wanted to add my contacts here, make the calls right from this screen. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of Accounts Receivable by Acumatica. If you have questions or would like more information about Acumatica, please visit our website at aswius.com.